Good evening and welcome back to Byline. This is the public affairs show right here at Amherst Media that's co-sponsored by the Amherst League of Women Voters. And we are trying to help uh, folks here in town uh, see the evolution of our new form of town government as we've transitioned from our town meeting and select board to our town council. And today we have a really interesting uh, trio. Um, the Troika are here <laughs> today. And uh, uh, the first of the, the three is uh, Brianna Sunrid, and she's one of the three people that is splitting the job of community participation officer. You got it. And uh, so, Brianna, tell us the origins of this position and what this job is all about. Sure. So the position of community participation officer came out as a, came out of the charter. Um, so what we're working to do. Um, it's, it's outlined in the charter as some, a position that will come in um, either from an existing staff person or to hire a new person. So obviously um, we've decided to go with existing staff. Uh, the town manager has appointed three folks um, to, to do this important work, myself being one of them. I'm the communications manager for the town. So my work it overlaps with a little bit of the community, community participation officer's goals. Um, some of those are, you know, increasing that participation with town government, especially this new town government, whether it's through boards and committees, um, serving in different other volunteer capacities. So we're, um, we started our work, I think it's just been under 100 days now. And I work with quick ramp up. Yes, quick ramp up. There's lots to lots to do. There were some short action items that we were looking to um, get off the ground, but we're also planning for our long range vision, which includes measures of success, um, different data that we can collect to see how we're doing. And I work closely with Jennifer and Angela, uh, the two other participation officers. We're seated seated very closely together on the mezzanine and. Um, we get the chance to collaborate and shout ideas over the cubicle <laughs> uh, throughout the day. So I think it's a great team. That's terrific. So uh, you said its origin is the charter. And when the town adopted the charter, they created by that vote this new position. But instead of hiring a separate person to do this job, uh, it's divided among three of you. Uh, have you found many other towns that have community participation officers? And if so, how does this uh, construct uh, jive with the other communities? That's a great question because we we constantly have been looking to Framingham for a lot of things because they've gone through this um, same government transition mm -hmm. almost a year ahead of us. Yeah. And I've actually um, become colleagues in, in a sort with their citizen participation officers, how they call it. Okay. Um, and she's a full-time staff person. Um, and what her and I are doing are actually building out a ne network of these types of positions in communities in Massachusetts. So we've met virtually over the phone a few times. Um, we're hoping to it, create some sort of listserv or best practices mm -hmm. for people who are in this position because we found that it's not called the same thing throughout the community. It looks very different from community com to community. Uh, Framingham has a full-time person. We have our trio working on this. Yeah. Different communities are calling it different things. And oh, so you have found it in a number of other places, and and from time to time you discover yet another, and you are adding them to the list. How many are we up to at this point? Do you think? So I am taking on Western Mass and yeah. Central Mass as my kind of data collection points. Yeah. Um, I found about 15 people who either have a similar title or parts of their job are related to this. Okay. And we've reached, I've reached out to them to say, this is what we're working on. Would you like to be included? It's, it's early days, but yeah. we're hoping to, in similar municipal positions, like human resources director, they have a really robust group where they share ideas and best practices. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important for us to be and able to do that. have you found any other community that's divided the job among more than uh, one employee? Not yet, not in the traditional sense of okay. you know having a call for that type of position and mm -hmm. then splitting it. I've seen 
um, different communities having little pieces of this work being done by se different folks, but nothing like what we have in Amherst. Okay, so that's interesting. So it, it's not an unusual function in town governments now, but this is an, uh, perhaps an unusual structure for it. And as when we put on our taxpayer hats, we should feel pretty good about this because we're basically not uh, putting together a job description, hiring a whole new person with all that's involved in that. And also, I would assume that if you hired a separate person, then you have all kinds of coordination issues because that person is now a totally different function and they're going to have to, uh, there are going to be things that are overlapping with other town employees. And in this case, we don't have that because you're integrating it into your existing job descriptions mm -hmm. based on your specialties. And, and so each of you had something you were doing. This has been added to it and it's consistent with what you've been doing. So in your case, if I remember correctly, prior to uh, taking on this responsibility, you did IT mm -hmm. and uh, you did communications. Correct. And so a uh, website is not an unusual thing within that picture because you use the website for communications and it's also uh, a, a function that fits in the IT realm, of course. So uh, what are you doing in the website realm since the new government has been formed. So that's one of my favorite projects to talk about. So I'd be happy to give a little uh, more about that. And just the, the genesis of the work I'm doing now as the communication manager, I still am in the IT department, but we realized that a lot of the things I w was working on were public facing and trying to collect those projects so we have a cohesive plan for communications either going out or coming in. So there's going to be a lot of work about, around that. The website is the chief um, tool that I think we have to at our disposal that um, to get this information out, but also to get that feedback back in. Um, we have a big project, uh, a web, complete website redesign that's going to be kicking off in the next six to nine months. Um, we're planning for that right now. And what that will allow community members easier access to information um, being able to to search for things and having the search be optimized so that they're finding the, the information that they're looking for, um, improving ADA compliance so that everybody can access our site. Mm -hmm. And we'll also be designing the website mobile first because we're looking at... What does at, that mean? That means that instead of designing it to be experienced at a desktop and then kind of shrinking it and smooshing it down to, to render on your phone, we're going to, going to actually be designing it with mobile first in mind so that it renders just fine on every device that you're um, experiencing okay. on. That's some feedback we've gotten from residents and community members that they wanted to look up this information while they were walking through town and they couldn't access it the same way that they would um, if it were designed a little mm -hmm. bit better. Great, and what are the kinds of other kinds of things that you want to improve in this new generation of websites, or is there different kinds of functionality that you want to add? Um, how does it relate to, will everything that's on the current uh, website be imported into the new one, eliminating anything that's old and outdated, replacing it with new, but other functions and other, uh, other elements that you're going to add? Absolutely. So one of the main, um, one of the main goals is doing almost an audit of our information, and this is going to be the perfect time to do that. We're going to be pulling the information over, but checking it to see that links work, that it's accurate and updated information, and archiving the things that need to be archived. We have 772 web pages. Wow. Um, and so trying to look at that in a, in a cohesive way, and do we need that many pages? Do you mm -hmm. need to click three or four times to get to the information that you, that you want to see in one or two clicks? So really looking at it from streamlining navigation, just making things easier to find, taking some of that heavy text on pages and representing data visually um, or providing interactive tools, interactive budgeting tools. So we have all these um, ideas and thoughts on our list that we hope to implement and the new site will make it more able for us to um, have integrations like that. And once you make the decisions about well, who's going to build the site for you and what you want on it. How long will it take approximately for it to uh, become functional? So once we, we sign a contract with somebody, and procurement is kind of the, um, the tough part to get through, um, but six to nine months from the time that we sign a contract, 
until we have a launch of a new website. Mm -hmm. And does this uh, work uh, for, for those of us who are not very technologically sophisticated? Is this a situation where uh, one morning you come in and you flip the switch, the old one's gone, the new one's present? So if you come online that day to go to the town website, there'll be no interruption, it'll be a smooth transition, but it's just going to look different and function differently once it's up there. Correct. We, we will not have a time where there is, uh, that the site is down. So we will be testing everything um, to the nines to make sure that there's no service interruption. Mm -hmm. There will probably be even workshops leading up to kind of show off the new look of the site. People are used to finding their information in one way and we don't want to disrupt that and leave them hanging when they're trying to find this information and it looks totally different the next yeah. day. And what other communities have done, um, Worcester, Cambridge, Somerville, is they've left the link to their old site as kind of training wheels into the new site. So that is something that we want to um, investigate if it's possible for us to do as well. Great. Other than working with your two colleagues, uh, the triad, the trio, <laughs> uh, whatever we want to call you or you want to call yourselves, uh, what's been the most fun and interesting part of this experience? Because it's really quite something to, to basically take three people and put them together to create a whole and I suspect it's going to be a whole greater than the sum of the parts. Um, so what's been the most interesting and fun part of this? And especially thinking about your own background and, and your own life here in the community. So the, the most fun for, for me has been thinking about ways that we can get out of town hall and meet people where they are mm -hmm. um, instead of trying to bring people to us designing different programming and events that we can go out into the community and meet people where they are. And that for me is really fun. I did a, a lot of that work when I worked for the city of Worcester and was, you know, half the time out in communities at neighborhood associations and in those types of meetings. And I saw the value there and you see the impact more directly of the work that you're doing when you're back mm -hmm. behind the, um, the walls in, mm -hmm. in town hall. So that's definitely behind the curtain. Behind the curtain. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, so that's fantastic because communications is inherently a creative enterprise mm -hmm. because you're always looking for new ways of getting the message across and capturing people's attention in this world where we're just inundated with information. And so this gives you some new opportunities, but it's not just about the paper communication and the social media and all that. It's also now about how you engage the community appropriately through events and activities partly by you attending other people's events mm -hmm. and integrating, but partly by you thinking as a team about new things that you could do to uh, create for the town. Absolutely, and we, we do see it as three-dimensional or multi-dimensional and not just you know sitting behind the screen and putting out messages. Yeah. We genuinely want to meet people where they're at and um, have that conversation instead of uh, a monologue. Yeah, because the whole point of the position or in this case positions, is to engage people, to create more transparency and more civic engagement here in the community. So uh, it's always better person to person than it is paper to paper and paper to eyes. So um, have you been to any of the town council meetings yet? Yes, I have been to many of the initial meetings yeah. and I watch them at, from home as uh -huh. well. Okay. So. And because they're being broadcast or rebroadcast after? How, how is that working? So the town council, um, the official um, town council oh, meetings. You're doing the town council meetings. I meant to say district Oh, meetings. the district meetings. Okay. Yes. Those are not being of, broadcast yet. Right, but that's part of what uh, the CPO team is working on to make sure that those are well organized and, and people are engaging, correct? Absolutely. One of our charges is um, aiding in the, the planning and conducting of the uh, district meetings and office mm -hmm. hours, which we've mm -hmm. also been helping. And Angela uh, Mills has created a, you know, how to set up your meeting document and just kind of instilling some best practices from the logistics of meeting space to what are your technical needs and how can we help you get the word out and actually showing up at the meetings. So I have been at the, the District 1 uh, district meeting, which happened last month on a snowstorm. On daylight savings time. Oh my goodness! <laughs> but we did have a, you know, a pretty good turnout, and um, we 
were, we had breakout sessions and folks were talking about important capital projects. And my okay. colleagues that you'll talk to um, today have in also, just a each, couple of minutes. in just a couple of minutes, <laughs> have also had really uh, fulfilling experiences at the district meetings. Terrific. Great. Well, speaking of uh, your colleagues, uh, uh, for our viewers, uh, there are three uh, CPOs and we wanted all three on today, but the set only handles up to three people. So we're going to take a very quick break now. You're not even going to hardly notice it at home, but we're about to uh, bring our, your colleagues on so we can continue the conversation. Brianna, thank you for being with us and for helping us begin to understand this new important function in our town government. Thank you for having me, Sam. You're welcome. So welcome back to the second part of our show with the uh, trio who are sharing the job of CPO, Community Participation Officer. And as we learned in the first uh, segment, there are, there are a number of these around the Commonwealth, but as far as we know, this is the only place where we've been creative and we have split the job among three people. And so we have Jennifer Moyston here and Angela Mills who are gonna fill out this picture for us. And we'll start with you, Jennifer. Yeah. Um, you used to do work with the town manager and human resources. You still do work with human resources, correct? Yes. But now you have a new lens through, that you're looking at human resources through. Tell us w how this new responsibility is changing and enhancing what you do around HR. I think the overall picture is to have Amherst become a reflection of its community, not just outside of the school systems and outside of the university, so that when people come into town hall, that they're being addressed by, or even for boards and committees, that those folks are a reflection of who we have in the, our community. So reflecting the diversity of uh, race, gender, class, we want Absolutely. to really engage, because that's one of the principles behind the whole re reform of our town government and the creation of the town council and the new charter was to basically uh, take the best of the past and build upon it, but also really open the doors in a much more uh, robust way. How are you doing that these days that may be different from what you were doing before? So I've been participating in multiple events that are happening around town and just having a presence in the community. Um, for instance, the Black His uh, Martin Luther King breakfast I attended, the community Martin Mm -hmm. MLK Junior MLK Breakfast. Junior Breakfast. Yeah. I go to events at the schools and speak and try to recruit that way, um, attending the district meetings as well, mm -hmm. or other ways that I have been trying to reach out to folks. Mm -hmm. And just plainly being in town, my kids are involved in a lot of sports, so I communicate to parents that way as well. Mm -hmm. So this is really about getting outside the four walls of the building yes. and into the community, both to reflect the town's commitment and the opportunities that are available, as opposed to the historic role where you were pushing papers and hoping people, yes, re resumes will come in, yes, at, for both town offices and so for town uh, committees and for jobs, but it wasn't it wasn't as proactive as what you're doing now. No, it was not. Uh, but and and so this is I'm going to assume more rewarding for you. It because is. It's, it's also nice to get out into the community it, it, and see. To be out outside and yeah. beyond the building. That's great. And Angela, how yes. is this job uh, changing what you historically have done, this new role of CPO? I've seen it as a great learning opportunity. Um, like Jennifer, I've been attending district meetings, and I was so pleased to attend the district meeting at the Jones Library that was hosted by District 3 counselors and to learn that for decades, there have been pockets in our community where people have rotating potluck dinners, and not only are they sharing food with neighbors, but also with students from the university who have hosted, and there's a, a dedicated set of plates that go from house to house. Mm -hmm. So there's a richness and a sharing that I had no idea was happening. And so part of our job as CPOs is to take those best practices and communicate them to the other counselors and maybe plant a seed that it works in this part of town, let's try it in you know, the north part of town and the south part mm -hmm. of town and, and see our community kind of become more cross-generational that way. Yeah, and speaking of seeing your community, you, you have a long history in town, <laughs> but you now I, I suspect 
uh, some part of this job is allowing you to see and think about the community in some different ways. Uh, talk about a little bit about what you've been, uh, your life like has been like here in the community and how that's affecting uh, what you're doing now. Sure, so I grew up in the Midwest and I came out to Western Mass to attend Amherst College in mm -hmm. 1991. And um, after graduating in 95, I've lived a little bit all over New England, but um, my husband is the football coach at Amherst College, and so we decided to start our family here. And working in the school system for seven years has kind of helped me connect with mostly South Amherst because I worked at Crocker Farm, but also get a feel for how incredibly diverse our student population is mm -hmm. and how 17 languages can happen under one roof. Mm -hmm. And socioeconomically, there are lots of kids who are grow, grow up in our town, and we are fortunate to live in a town that has three institutions of higher learning, but many of those children have yet to experience a college campus. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the things we're thinking about is as we start citizen, um, not citizen, but community uh, forums, is to connect those kids with mentors and with people on those campuses so that they can see that as a legitimate opportunity as they grow in their mm -hmm. education. What kind of response are you getting as you show up at various events in the community uh, out there being missionaries for engagement in everything that's uh, Amherst and, and the community? So I, th I think overall we have a high response in our citizens activity form, which is um, the form that you complete for boards and committees. I feel kind of feel every time that we go to an event, we have a few more submitted um, as well. and. And we've made some changes to that. So yeah. it used to be the Citizen Activities Forum, and now mm -hmm. we've changed it to Community <sighs> Activity Forum uh -huh. because we recognize that so many people who live in Amherst aren't necessarily citizens. Right. But during their time here, as they pursue their education or as they help in different ways in our community, they can take part in all of the boards and committees without necessarily being, quote unquote, a citizen, citizen. but more a part of the fabric of our community. Do you take those forms with you to these events, or you're we using We do, it, for a laptop. Oh, okay, through the laptop. I was going to say, because yes. I thought you had to do it online. Yes. But you just bring the, uh, the bring laptop, laptop, which is the equivalent of the clipboard and the form today. And we're happy to have people call us, and we'll fill it out for them over the phone. Huh? Great. So there are several people who have chosen that option. Great. And have you seen an uptick in the number of people who are starting to file, and are uh, you starting to recognize some growing diversity in the population that's um, yes uh, so you're starting to see some actual direct immediate results from this work which uh, as Brianna said is only about a hundred days old yeah diversity in lots of different ways I would say I mean we've made lots of um, things optional so like the gender identification is op optional mm -hmm. the age range is optional um, you don't have to tell us necessarily whether you rent or own anymore um, all of those things are optional. I think the piece that we really like is that we're seeing people who have never put their name forward for a board yeah. or a committee come forward and say, we want to be a part yeah. of this well, for the first time. Well, that's terrific, the fact that you don't have to pigeonhole yourself, right. which then means that it's almost like um, in higher ed, uh, what do they call it, uh, blind need, that you're not making judgments based upon the legacy of the parents or whatever. You're judging the person on, on what they tell you and if they give you enough information, you can see, oh, this person looks really interesting based on their experience, and you have no idea what their gender is necessarily, or their race, or how long they've lived in town. Right, which makes it even better. That's Absolutely. fantastic. Yeah, that really makes a big, big difference. So uh, uh, can you uh, give me some feedback on how uh, what your experience is going to district uh, council meetings? Have each of you been to one or two of those? Yes. Okay. <laughs> You don't have to tell me about the politics of it, but um, what what uh, what's the experience like? What are you observing? Because we this is a new mechanism in town. We want to make sure people understand it mm. and its value, and uh, maybe consider participating. I find it to be a great way for people to come and bring their ideas to the councilors, or their thoughts, or their concerns. Um, it's a great way to do that without necessarily calling town hall, which is also okay too because we are more than willing to help people get through those or take their suggestions and pass them forward but it's another way for people to connect with the counselors and to be involved mm -hmm. Great. any thoughts uh, to add to that i was so impressed counselor pam and counselor ryan invited me to their district three meeting and i only had like two minutes to kind of say 
we have vacancies on boards and committees, but also we'd love to see you volunteer in small, small ways mm -hmm. if you don't feel like sitting at the table for a board and committee. I stayed for the whole meeting and it was amazing to see people break off in groups and have really vibrant discussions in small groups and then come back together and share out what had happened in the small groups. Mm -hmm. um, I thought the counselors were really innovative in the way that um, they had 60 people show up for their meeting and they knew not everyone would feel comfortable voicing their opinion in front of a large group, so they sent around note cards uh -huh. and people could write their thoughts on the note card and leave them um, on a table face mm -hmm. down. And it was just really... And did they use those cards during the meeting without identifying the source? They completely did. Good. Yeah. And uh, so you didn't have to put your name on it, but your thought got to the room? Exactly. Oh, that's, that's great. And uh, um, were there... Uh, when they broke into groups, were they uh, reporting, what, did they do reporting back? They did. And did priority setting go after that or it was just, okay, we've now shared what we're thinking and we've put a little, our little group put, put it into priority but not necessarily the whole group? So I think it would definitely go on to inform the agenda for their next district meeting. Good. But the other piece that was fascinating is a lot of citizens or community members came out of those small group meetings and said, we'd like for this part of the meeting to happen first. Mm. And okay. we would love for this to be the start or the genesis for a discussion and then come back to the so, planned event. So they want to be able to speak out first and not have a directed, feel like it's a directed conversation. Right, have it happen more organically. Oh, that's, uh, that's really interesting. And uh, have each of you been to only one or more than one? And did you, is there some variety going on at these meetings that show some possible best practices that they can learn from each other as counselors? Absolutely. I've only been to the District 5, which okay. is where I reside. So um, I don't really have anything to compare it to, but except for Angela's stories. And so I, I did take some of those ideas that Angela had spoken about from her district meetings to the District 5 counselors. Mm -hmm. and, and, it, and it works and it helps. Absolutely. So I'm wondering if each of you are thinking down the road what you'd like to accomplish in the next, let's say, three months or six months or nine months, because you've been standing up the job and the and this function. You've been, you've all been working together. Because I know I sat on a committee with all of you mm -hmm. uh, to plan the inaugural, so I know how well you all work together. But this is a new role, and you're splitting a job. I mean, right. You're splitting the function, and the town government will be held accountable for this because it's in the charter. So I'm wondering, what are you thinking about the next 30, 60, 90, uh, 120 days, whatever? Uh, do you have a little work plan, some priorities individually or collectively? I, I think for myself, there is um, a population of residents who don't know how the town government works and don't know much about town government. So I would like to rope those individuals in and to have them become more involved. Hmm. Um, it's just one of those things, if you're not around someone who's in town government, you don't necessarily know much about it unless you as an individual are reaching out to find out. So I would like to Do you have a, an idea ones. or two that you're working on to actually exercise that? Or are you just thinking this is a priority for me and I need to find some ways to do that? It's a little bit of both. Some of it just happens naturally. Again, my kids all are involved in sports, so it's as simple as being in, out in the community mm -hmm. and just talking to individuals. And as other community events come up, booking yourself in to go to yes. those events, et cetera. Yes. Okay. And how about you? Anything I, as, hot that, that you're planning <laughs> and thinking about that we should know? As we meet as CPOs, the discussion for me is always like, how are we going to measure this? Right, uh, like what's okay. the metric going to be? How are we going to be able to look back and say, we, we've we been were doing effective. a great job, right? right? So deciding on that metric and then maybe having that guide us, but it is, it, it has been a really interesting passion project for I think all three of us mm -hmm. in terms of finding ways for people to come through the door that look like us yeah. <laughs> yeah. and have and feel comfortable in the space that is yeah. town hall and that is kind of the seat of our town government. Um, so I think that's the push for me is, and, and that'll happen at our next town council meeting. There are kids coming mm -hmm. in from Crocker Farm oh, nice. with this really interesting idea for um, book boxes at bus stops. Yeah. And it's cross-generational. The gentleman who is going to be building the boxes is retired and is donating the materials and the time. So it's a great way for the kids to learn about how the town council serves its legislative function and mm -hmm. guards the town way but it's also a visionary project in terms of bringing in people from lots of different age groups. Very good. And it's also values-driven, which is 
part of the foundation of this. It's driven by the Charter's desire to have more transparency, more inclusion, and more civic engagement in town. And so uh, congratulations to all three of you for Thank standing you. up this new function, and we we'll look forward to uh, seeing how this continues to evolve. And as we said earlier, it's only 100 days, so um, <laughs> right. you had to put it together and you had to start actually getting out in the community, and it sounds like you've done an awful lot, uh, and you have a lot of passion and energy for it. So thank you very much for adding all that additional work and also looking at your old work through a new lens. So with that, uh, we've now learned uh, something about our community participation officers, and we hope that uh, you'll say hello as you see them going around town and ask them how you can get involved. Thanks for joining us.